I want to talk to you about something new and something old, and in the process, share old words about something timeless. First of all, I've been playing a lot of The Swindle lately. On Christmas Day, I signed up for speedrun.com. See, I knew I was probably one of the fastest Swindle players in the world. I'd shown my times to Dan Marshall and then looked around the internet to try and find if there were any other people who had done a better run than I had. I couldn't find any, and the run I was planning on submitting had a 10 minute sit around do nothing period. Well, I figured at some point someone else would do it and then I'd find out I was in fact quite bad at the swindle. But nobody did, and I kept checking on speedrun.com and found that nope, nobody's done it yet. Nobody else has done it yet. I realized as GDQ bore down upon me that if in fact nobody's done it, then nobody's gonna do it until someone cares enough. And if nobody cares but me, well, it's a free trophy, isn't it? This was the journey into exploring what it took to set up the Swindles speedrun.com page. First thing I had to do was sign up for an account. Then, reading the paperwork to make sure I wasn't doing anything shifty, I went and checked to see if I was to set things up, I'd need to wait seven days. And that's when began the waiting. Seven days to do a thing is just the right amount of time to let my brain go squirrely. First things first is, I kind of wonder why I never did anything about it before now. I mean, I kind of do know, I just can't see it as a good reason. I think I never bothered to make the Swindle speedrunning archives because that was something for speedrunners to do. Proper speedrunners, people who are good at it and are friends with speedrunners and who merit respect as speedrunners. People who are in the Discord, people who are either in the trash human category who think Bonesaw did nothing wrong, or the cool people I see on Games Done Quick. It is extremely strange to me to reflect on this, but I genuinely wasn't interested in making the speedrun leaderboard. I wanted it to be there so I could slink into the back of the classroom and submit my scores so that all the people doing the infrastructural stuff, all the people doing the work, they could do their thing and I wouldn't have to do anything or say anything. I was neglecting that speedrunning is a social experience. I was neglecting the speed of crowds. Part of my job is putting what we call text into a position where you can see the lines that connect it to things that may have been responsible for its creation, or things that may help you understand the way that the text is in ways it may or may not be intended. The way I describe it to students who are dismissive of the difficulty of the degree is that media studies is merely the study of how literally every human being interacts with every other thing that exists or doesn't exist. This can be deeply confusing for people who want experts to give them meaningful answers, to be consulted directly and spit out a useful or usable answer, which we kind of just don't do in media studies, because so much of what we're dealing with is examining culture, which runs on a level that is simultaneously saturating through, and yet also the surface that everything else runs on, and beholden to their forces in a sort of whole general mishmash of stuff. It's complicated. Point is, you come to this blog to hear someone who's got a lot of practice writing this blog, and by hear I mean read, and by read I mean what Marshall McLuhan referred to as making an ear of an eye, which is some body horror shit right there, but the point is that the thing I did there where I dropped someone you never heard of, but you could look them up on Google and be told they wrote a bunch of books and they have a Wikipedia page, and they were probably a skeevy sexist or racist, and you don't want to necessarily go digging into their books yourself, so you're happy to let me serve as an interpreter because the odds are I'm that bad aren't so bad. That sort of intercessionary media is kind of what I do. And when it comes to speedrunning, I need to pull off some impressive bullshit to try and relate this work to a greater academic space in a way that's funny or engaging. I'm not about to write a piece like Speedrunning Science, nor my nameless foe's beautiful introductory and expanded primer, and there are funnily enough not a lot of people who had opinions on how this thing worked, though I think with some minor contortions I could get you to Roger Calois thinks that speedrunning isn't a game, but speedrunning with Twitch chat live is. What I want to talk about though is how speedruns are an interesting form of collaborative art which may seem a little weird to those of you who watch these events where you get to see a runner executing a run, a sort of game attribute, where we refer to people as the best or world leader or the fastest or the next level or whatever wording you favor when you hear these people described as the people who try over and over and over again, miss the first split, break, try again, miss the first split, try again, bad level spawns on the first one, reset, try again, 
even if maybe you notice the way that every single one of those runners will espouse that their community is literally the best and they're also great and this trick the greg egg trick all of that all of that can be seen as a sort of breathless collaborative communal composition duango ac the spokesperson for tasbot has drawn a direct parallel between tas or tool assisted speedruns okay i guess i will do some nomenclature and the historical device of a player piano the player piano is a machine that's designed to be played it's a piano after all, but it contains within it a device that lets you feed into it someone else's composition and let the machine play itself. The composition, the paper you feed into the player piano, is itself a sort of coding for the machinery, and that composition is made by the work of multiple people coming together to form a rendition that you can replay in your home. No one person made every single thing that goes into that paper. Someone had to print the paper, someone had to make the notches in the paper that make it play the composition, someone had to make the original composition, someone had to make the machinery that makes this particular piano work. Everyone is involved, but they are all removed. Ontologically speaking, all of these entities are engaged with the thing when you use it to play the music. The vision of a machine that plays itself being a form of play is extremely interesting to me, especially as a game studies person, where the question of what new and weird forms of gameplay even are, with my massively permissive vision of game definition. I've argued that players watching a game on Twitch and contributing via chat are playing a game, though not the same game as the person they're watching. It's just the control mechanism is extremely obtuse, and that they're playing a game with the person playing the game. And of course, all the rest of Twitch chat as well. When you're watching a speedrun, the metaphor of music is applicable once again, because every speedrun is not just the execution of the one runner in front of you, but the combined and contributed effort of an orchestra of people who have played alongside that person, encouraging them and showing them techniques, helping them practice, driving them to succeed, filling out leaderboards and showing them what can be done, what can work as the communal effort shaves the techniques and the design down and down and down. As if you have a composition of a single whole piece where the orchestra perform it in isolation, but each composer is working on nailing down sometimes sections as small and refined as a single note. Speedrunning is cool and the best speedruns can, for all that it's a meme, be the product of an amazing community. And that is, people who are putting in the work to maintain that social structure. I'm not saying mods are the most important people in the world, but because I'm going to be one now, I guess it's my best interest to at least imply it. I was thinking about this as I waited to request the board. I knew that I had a run that was a personal record, but I hadn't checked it in a while. During this waiting period, I went and watched it and found to my surprise, it has a weird black clip in it, and I think I cut something out. Maybe it's a Discord ding while I was standing still. Maybe it was an email pop-up. Maybe it was cutting out long period of standing that I thought didn't impact the short run days version of the video. I don't know. It doesn't infringe on the day count, but I am pretty confident that this video isn't a valid speedrun. Well, the easiest way to get a nice clean speedrun then would be to just do a new one. Except to my immense embarrassment, I couldn't. I spent the Christmas through to New Year's period trying to do a single section, single run of the swindle in under 90 minutes. And I couldn't get the swindle. Period. Fast forward a few more days. My speedrun account was now old enough to request games. I punched in the link to go request it, and I found that I needed to enter my social media info to make sure that I could request a game. This makes sense. This is because they need someone to moderate the game I'm asking for, and it turns out that by asking for the board, I am indicating that um, I am at least one of the people interested in it, and that means, suck it up buttercup, it's time to become a mod. I also had to confront another ongoing question here, which is how do I relate to Twitter? I know I'm still on Twitter, this blog post is being shared to Twitter after all, but I'm not posting there as part of my intentional attempts to be more present on other places that I don't have the same ethical objections to. But on the other hand, the point of having those social media contacts is so that people can ask me questions and... Weirdly, co-host, for example, isn't good at that. Weird. Anyway, I provided a bunch of access points, like my Tumblr for those of you who are into that, and put in the request. I got asked some questions, and one of them was wanting a video of my run. But I hadn't been able to successfully pull off a Henry Beresford swindle, so I didn't have anything to share. But I needed one, 
to make the application. So I went back to the archives and went looking to see if there was any point where I finished the swindle and uploaded a video. And I did. A 15 day, one hour uncommentaried run, which I titled The Full Henry Beresford. That made it the best provable speedrun I'd ever done. I linked that in the form. I checked all the info I'd provided and I sent it away. I was then told, okay, great. We'll get back to you in one to four weeks, provided there's nothing major going on, like say a speedrunning marathon. That should be happening now. But I am undeterred. This video is going up not just to direct you to, hey, there's a swindle speedrun category now, and there should be eventually, and I'll update the video description as is appropriate when it is, but also to step you through the actual process to hopefully prepare you that if you're easily thwarted by modest resistance, I thought I'm gonna fuck that off. Right. And I guess to put it out there, there is a world record holder for the swindle now. It's me. I'm holding it for now. You can probably beat it if you're better than me. Come and take it.